Hi everyone, I'm super excited for today's video. I was up all last night, not all last night, but for a while because it was boggling my mind that there was not a way to schedule comments in Trello. And while there still isn't a native way to do it, um, I was able to piece together a solution that uses Pixie Bricks and Zapier working on some video anima animation, so let's see if I got things to pop up there, um, to help us do this. And so long story short, took me a while. I figured out how, and you can do it too. Um, and you don't have to go through all the pain that I went through to figure it out. You can just follow these steps that I lay out for you. So join me for the next couple minutes. I'm gonna show you how straightforward it is. Um, you will need Pixie Bricks and you will need Zapier. And my understanding is you're probably gonna need a paid version of Zapier because we're gonna use a multi-step Zap. So more on that to come, but um, yeah, let's get started. All right, everybody. So here's how we're going to do this. It's um, pretty straightforward. Let me demo the, pos the, the possibility, the, the, the functionality. Let me demo the functionality of it first. So you'll see here, you go, let's say there's a card you want to write a comment on. Um, let's go back to, the, it doesn't really matter which one we do it on, but um, open up the comment box and hit schedule. And then you'll have some draft for a comment. You can make it whatever you want. Let's say I want to test this feature. You select a time. You can literally select like, you know, the next minute. You can select whenever and just hit schedule comment. Bada boom, bada bing, gonna do a fun few things and then it's done. Notice the comment didn't post, um, but in, I think I said two minutes from now, it will. So we'll wait on that. We'll come back and, and check on that, but this is super exciting. I was looking for this sort of functionality because a lot of things like Gmail offers this. When you're making an email, you can schedule a send by putting in a specific um, date that you want it to send to. Slack also does the same thing. You can schedule Slack messages. And I find this really helpful because I like to work at sort of random times of day sometimes. Um, and I also work with people in a distributed environment. So it's not, you know, that we're all working the same set hours. and. Although I know like, you know, nobody's super bothered by Trello notifications. Um, I was definitely one of those employees that my manager or somebody pinged me and I saw a notification waiting from them. It didn't matter if it was 10 o'clock at night and they weren't expecting a response. Like I felt the need to respond. So um, I think this is a super helpful feature if you're like collaborating with other folks and you wanna be able to send a message later, you know, it's late at night and you don't wanna bother your team with it. You wanna schedule it for the morning. Totally, totally easy to do. So notice here, it actually worked. It um, waited till the right time and then posted it. So there it is. And so now I'm gonna show you how to build it. So you're gonna need two things to build it. You're gonna need Zapier and Pixie Bricks. So we'll start with, um, we'll actually start over in Zapier because for it to show up in Pixie Bricks, you need to make a Zap first. So what I ended up doing is I created um, a new Zap and I added my, event was Pixie Bricks. The trigger event is new push with data. And so you're going to have to connect your Pixie Bricks account. The way you do that's pretty easy. Um, you just go into, let's see, we can actually bring that up here. Um, Pixie Bricks. Uh, once you log in, open the browser extension and you'll go to your integrations and you'll be able to click here to view your, your key. If you don't have Zapier there, you just hit integration and search for Zapier and then click that and you'll be able to copy and paste your key. So that's what you'll be required to do for Zapier to get it all set up. It'll send you over, or uh, well, actually before it sends over any sample data, you have to set up your trigger. And so this is, you call your Zap identifier, whatever. It's what you wanna be able to reference inside of Pixie Bricks. So I called it comment and you want to specify field names that you want it to be looking for. So for this app in specific, we wanna look at the comment, what's the message you wanna post. We wanna look at the timestamp of when do you wanna post it. And then we want to get the card ID so that we know where to actually post this comment. So if you hit test trigger, it'll pull some data. And before you can set up these other pieces, um, or actually I guess you can technically set up those pieces, but it, it won't work until you set up the stuff on Pixie Bricks. I just set up a really basic email called send email to Gmail that basically connect your email um, and choose your Gmail account. And then just set up an action that basically sends those fields to your Gmail. Um, basically what you're trying to do here is just get this app to run. So it recognizes this is a thing and then it's like activated so Pixie Bricks can find it. So you can do whatever here. We, this isn't extremely important except that you just wanna actually turn the app on so it fires and, and does something. So um, that's, that's what you need to get set up on that end. And then 
we can start working with Pixie Bricks. So head over here. This button is the uh, schedule Trello comment. And so literally the way I started is just add button and um, I added a button. So I just used the selector to select the save button and it spit out a button called schedule right next to it, which is exactly what I wanted. You can rename it with the caption. Um, I wanted to only do this on Trello.com. Could give it an icon. I didn't really want to do that. Um, same with any of these other styling options. You could do stuff with that, but it wasn't really necessary for me. Next, you want to add the show a modal or sidebar form um, at that brick. And then what you're going to do with that is that's basically going to pop up that field that you saw that asks me, um, you know, what's the comment you want to post and when do you want to post it? And so we've got, whoop, let me move my video out of the way here so you can see better. Um, we've got, you know, here's the field. It's just called comment. Don't really need example form fields, so I'll just get rid of that. Um, I made a paragraph text. That's probably the easiest way. Uh, if you really wanted to get fancy and have like templated sort of comments, you could have a drop down field here of like, you know, where you don't even have to type the comment. You just select one of the options. Um, and then I added another field called timestamp. And to do that, you just hit add new field. And this one is just input type of date and time. You could set a default value. I wasn't too worried about that. Um, but if you're like one of the type of people that generally works late at night and you, you'd rather just the default be like the next day at 9 a.m., there's probably a way you could configure that, but I haven't played around with that yet. Um, and then, yeah, so the next thing you want to do is you want to add a brick for opening a new tab. And what you want to do, what we're going to do with this is we're going to go get the card ID because that makes it so that Zapier knows, okay, what card do I post it to? So the way you access a card ID is you go to a card name and then, um, or a card URL, and then you just uh, append dot JSON on the end of it, and it spits out this really fun looking um, block of JSON about your card. But this is the card ID right here. It's in that first block. So that's what we're gonna, we're gonna go get. So to do that though, we need to open a tab, open that JSON tab. And again, you just put add input dot URL dot JSON. So it's gonna grab the URL of the card from, from our input and then apply um, .json to the end of it. Then you wanna use the HTML element reader brick. And so what that's gonna do is it's just gonna read the HTML on the page, um, which pulls what we need, AKA this whole sort of object here uh, to make that work. So next add the parsed JSON brick because it's gonna pull um, the text of that page as a JSON brick. So to reference it, you just wanna use add element dot text. And what that is gonna do is just grab whatever is on there. Um, it's gonna grab, oh, actually, I just thought of this for um, your HTML element reader. One thing you need to do is make sure you set the advanced options for target tab because you're gonna want it to go do the action in the target tab. Because remember, we started in Trello, we showed a modal, and then we open another tab and we want to read the data from that other tab, AKA this one right here that has all the JSON in it. So sorry for getting ahead of myself there, but make sure that is set to target tab. And I believe that's the only one you have to worry about for that. Um, so back to this parse JSON brick, we're just going to tell it we want to read what they pulled in that previous brick. So to do that, we're going to reference at element, which is the output. So if you end up changing this to, you know, JSON object or whatever, just make sure that matches what you put right here. And then you want to use dot text because that's going to grab the element and then look for the text object in it, which is effectively the entire page there. So it's going to grab that and um, then it's going to let us reference anything in there. So you can see, let me actually run it and you'll be able to see, doo -doo 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 -doo. let's put a date in here. Of, ah, let's just do 12.22 p.m. Schedule comment. It's going to run the whole thing. So you can see here's what it's actually grabbed. It's, it's rendered the content of the entire thing as a JSON object. And so we're going to close that tab because now we're done. We've got the data we need and we don't want to have that extra tab hanging up over there. So when you saw it pop up really quick, do the thing and close, that's very much intentional. And so then lastly, we just add the push data to Zapier brick. And so what you'll do is you'll click down here to find different zaps and workflows. Um, ideally, you're going to find the one that you just made over here. So it should match exactly what you've got in your setup trigger here. And then it should return also those three fields that you specified in Zapier. And now all you need to do is map them together. So 
for the card ID, which we were able to just find, we just need to reference the ID um, key in that JSON object from the last one up here. So we're going to reference the parsed JSON by saying at transform and then dot ID, which will go look through that JSON that we had here. It'll go find um, the key called ID and then grab the value for that. So that's how we get that. And then these two are pretty straightforward. These are just literally grabbing what you put in the form. So at form.comment, at form.timestamp, this is how you reference, grab the data from the form break and the, um, the, the specific property from there. So we're able to grab those. And I feel like we got pretty lucky with this because I didn't need to like mess with the timestamp or anything. Actually, Zapier was able to read it perfectly. So once we do that, save that and go ahead and run it like by actually doing the action so that way it goes goes through and then if you set it up like I did where it sends you that email uh, you should have an email sitting in your inbox that's going to show basically all of that data coming through as it should so that's going to be great so now let's actually set up the zap to schedule the comment so you don't need to change anything up here all you need to do is click the plus button to add an action called delay um, and from there you'll choose uh, delay until. Notice there's delay for, delay after. You want to delay until because we're telling it, all right, you just got this data from Pixie Bricks, but don't do anything with it until a specific time. And um, you'll tell it when to delay it until by setting that timestamp. So that's where it's going to look at, okay, whatever was pushed through in the timestamp, um, that's, I'm going to hold this app until then. So it could be a few minutes, like I've been doing in my examples. It could be till tomorrow. It could be till next week. Um, you, it'll delay it until that time frame. And then um, it's asking how should we handle dates in the past. Um, it's continuing if it's up to one day. You could probably do various things with this, but I just left it because it's the default. I don't really care. Like you're not going to schedule a date that's in the past. So you probably should expect your zap to avail if you pick a past date. Um, and then you'll test the action. Uh, one thing that's a little tricky is the way Pixie Bricks works no matter how many times I keep sending it real data, it still keeps pulling this sample data. So it's not actually pulling what I just did, um, an actual comment, an actual timestamp, or an actual card ID, which if you're familiar with Zapier, it usually will do that. So you just kind of have to ignore that and ignore some of these tests. So the delay by actually works, so you can hit retest, but um, I'll show you on this Trello one, you're actually gonna have to, to hold off on that. So next, Add this uh, new action in Trello, uh, new Zap, just go to Trello. Um, and you wanna choose the action event of create comment. And so then you will say choose event or choose account. You'll hook up your Trello account and you'll set up your action. And you can skip board and list and just go to the card. And that's where you will click from here to go to custom and grab from Pixie Bricks your data that you push through to Pixie Bricks, which is that card ID that we parsed through with JSON and we're able to get together. So there it is and so it knows where to send it and then you're telling it what to send it so once again you're going to go look in what we got from pixie bricks which includes that comment it's going to post it in there as comment text and if you wanted to you could say like append something at the end here like posted by zapier or you know scheduled to be posted or you know whatever you want to do with that so i kind of didn't want to because i kind of like when it's not set out like that so that's kind of how I left it but it's totally up to you if you want to add anything there and then importantly you need to go to this test action and you're going to need to um there's like an option up here that says like skip test and it's going to feel scary but you're going to need to do that because it just doesn't work with this sort of data that we the sample data that we're getting from pixie bricks so then you just do that and voila you're good to go make sure your zap is turned on and then it will perform just like I showed you here so let's I'll do do one more example just for fun oh although here here's the thing i haven't figured out yet you can't type it here and then hit schedule and it grab it you need to start by hitting schedule but you can just copy and paste what you put there and then hit see i want to do it at 26 schedule comment notice it did all those things open up that new page quickly grab the id it's now sent that to zapier and i expect in about a minute a little less than a minute actually at 12 26 it's going to post that comment but notice it didn't post it right away which is what it would have done if it was doing its normal trello action so um this is super cool like i said really useful for if you work at odd hours or anyone on your team works odd hours it's a great way to uh basically be able to channel when you ping someone but it not disrupt your specific workflows so it's a, a nice way to to tackle that 
And if for any reason you're, you're like, I wanted to, to cancel something that was scheduled, you could go into your zaps and you could find when it's sitting there. Um, I probably have, oop, go back to your zap history. P test. Um, look in there. It should show you what all's going on. So it should show you that, you know, I just grabbed one. Let's see. Let's try for today. Let's look, see if we can find my exact one. Although it's going to be a little late at this point because it's 1226. So, yep, it's posted a comment. But assuming you scheduled it for, like, tomorrow, you could go into your zap runs and find where it's, um, I believe it'll show you the ones where it's, like, okay, it's, like, waiting to delay it. And then you can cancel it from there. So, uh, Yeah. Um, hope this is useful to you all. Um, I thought it was kind of cool to be able to figure out how to do it, but if you have any questions or anything else, you're like, can I do this or that with it? Let me know and I'll try to improve on it.